Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to hopefully resolve if your computer is stuck in a boot loop. So basically, if your computer just continuously ends up launching the automatic repair utility that's built into Windows, and you're stuck in that, this tutorial should hopefully be able to resolve your issue. So for this tutorial demonstration, I'm going to be using a bootable Windows 10 media source. So I have already used the Windows 10 media creation utility, downloaded the Windows 10 ISO from there, and then put it onto a DVD in which I'm about to boot my computer off of. So this will also work for USB flash drives as well so long as the size of the drive is large enough so I believe it has to be about four to five gigabytes at the least so preferably if you have an eight gigabyte free flash drive this tutorial probably would work best if you don't have a DVD keep in mind you're probably gonna have to clear everything off of that USB flash drive because it will clear anything that's currently stored on there if you choose to go that method and you might be able to actually load some of the automatic repair utility options if you're able to boot to the troubleshooting screen or about to go to. But if you're unable to get into any of the troubleshooting options you see in this video without going out and getting the tool, I will have links in the description of the video for both the tool and how to create the utility. So how to go through the download and installation process of burning it to a DVD. So I have both of those in the description of the video. You're more than welcome to check that out. So I just want to cover all of our bases with that. So here I'm at the boot menu. You will have to look up your specific computer on the internet. So typically to access the BIO settings in order to change the boot order or to enter the boot menu, it will be one of the keys that will on the top of your keyboard. So either one of the function keys or the escape key. In my case, it's the escape key, but it could also be the F2, the F6, the F8. It really depends on your specific computer, so I don't really want to tell you guys it's one thing when it could be a couple different things. So you might have to look into that if you're unsure, but we're going to be booting off of a DVD, like I said, that I have the Windows 10 Media installation off of. So I'm going to use my arrow keys to select over the CD-ROM drive. Again, this screen might look a little different for you guys, but the whole purpose of what I'm doing right here is that I've already burned the Windows 10 installation files. So as if we were going to install Windows 10, except we're going to be using the repair functionality that's built into that tool. So I'm going to select the CD-ROM drive to boot the Windows 10 information off of. So it might take a second to load here. Press any key to boot from CD or DVD. Again, this should work for USB flash drives as well. I'm seeing an increasing number of computers that do not have optical drives in them. So I have mixed feelings about that. But right now, as we can see, we are booting the tool, or we should be booting off of the tool. So just give it a moment to load here. Okay, so you should get a Windows setup screen here. It doesn't really matter what's up here. You can keep it as whatever your language is. Probably be preferred, to be honest. Just select Next. And instead of clicking on the Install Now button, you want to direct your attention over the bottom left corner where it says Repair Your Computer. You want to left click on that button instead. So here we go, guys. Choose an option. Now, like I said earlier in the video, if you're able to boot into this tool without downloading the media creation utility, going through that whole process, you're more than welcome to try it. However, if you don't have success with that, I would suggest going out on the internet and getting the tool like I'm showing in this video. So if you see the screen and you're already in the loop, just don't be surprised about that. It's the same utility, except this is not booting off of your potentially corrupt hard drive. So that's one reason why I like using this tool because it's kind of separate from your main operating system. So underneath choose an option, I'm going to left click on the troubleshoot tile, reset your PC or see advanced options. So you want to left click on that. Now we have several options here to choose from and there are several different ways you go about hopefully resolving the issue. 
Now I'm going to suggest them in the way that I would recommend trying them. The first thing I would personally recommend would be to go to the system restore tile to use the system restore point recorded on your PC to restore Windows. So if I left click on that and then I select my target operating system here. So currently I do not have any system restore points on this computer which is a perfect reason to go jump back and go to some of the other methods I'm going to show in this tutorial. But if you did have any restore points, they'd be listed in a table, and there should be a little description information about if there was a Windows update that it happened that caused the system restore point to be created. And I would suggest restoring back your computer. I do find that does have some success, so I would recommend trying that first. That should actually resolve quite a few of your issues. So if I close out of here, so now it brings us back to the choose an option screen. Like I said, I would recommend trying that first. Um, if that did not work for you guys, I would also suggest if you had any image backup to a CD or DVD, so if you had already made something, you could do a system image recovery as well. Very few people probably have this or even know what that is. So I'm really not going to go into that method too much for this video, but if you selected it, Again, you choose an operating system, you'd actually have to insert the DVD. I don't really know how many people have this all backed up, so I'm not going to really dig too deep into it. But if you did select the system image, again, you'd have to have already backed it up somewhere. So that's probably going to be tossed out. Again, it's another option. I mean, just going down the list here. But the next one would be start repair, fix problems to keep Windows from loading. I would hold off on that one for a moment. I would actually suggest going back to a previous version. So if you select this option up here, select the target operating system, it should begin loading the previous build of Windows 10. So if you're running problems with the current version of Windows, going back to the previous version might fix them. This won't affect your personal files, but you'll lose any changes you've made to apps and settings since your most recent update. So I would suggest clicking on go back to the previous version. So I'm going to cancel out of here. So basically at this point we've already discussed the system restore. The next option I would suggest would be to go to the go back to a previous version. The third option if you do not have a system image recovery which I'm assuming most of you guys probably don't would be to jump ahead to the start repair which will fix problems that keep windows from loading. While this sounds very good, it probably has not fixed your issue yet because it usually loads this when your computer is stuck in an infinite loop. So if I selected that, just for the sake of this tutorial, and then we selected Windows 10, it's going to go through the diagnosing our PC. Now I would give this a couple minutes here to run, and I do want to keep it on the screen just so you guys get a feel for how long it actually will take. Because it will take a little bit of time, not that long, but I will jump back in with the narration once we get to some screens that require some explanation or something to be addressed.
Okay guys, so we can see that we are booting into our Windows desktop now. So if that still did not resolve the issue, I'm going to jump back into the troubleshooting utility and I'll be back in a moment. Okay guys, so now that we're back on the advanced options screen, I'm going to jump over to the command prompt. So assuming nothing else worked for you and you don't have any other backups, I would suggest this before doing a complete factory reset. Now, like I've stressed in my comment section, I've stated in other videos as well, your data and your files might already be gone before even watching this video, but if you do the method I'm about to show you guys, you really have to follow along with what I'm doing. It's really important you do, and there's no guarantees at this point, or even at, when you start watching this tutorial, to be honest with you, because I don't know what the situation was that brought you to this video, but this is definitely a little bit more in-depth here, so if you're not comfortable, that's fine. But we're going to jump into it though. I do want to put this out there because this has helped quite a few people before from what I've seen. So I'm going to jump into that. So I'm going to select command prompt here. Okay, so now on our elevated command line window, you want to type in whatever drive letter Windows is installed on. Most people should be the C drive. However, in my case, my Windows installation is on my D drive. So I'm going to tap the D key on my keyboard and then do a colon. So one dot on top of another dot. And then you want to hit enter. Once you've done that, you want to type in DIR, exactly it appears on my screen. You want to hit enter again. Once you've done that, you want to type in CD space backslash Windows backslash system32 backslash config, exactly how it appears on my screen. Again, CD space backslash windows backslash system32 backslash config then you want to hit enter once you have done that you want to type in MD so uppercase MD here space backup exactly how it appears on my screen so again MD backup you want to hit enter so if for some reason it says the MD backups are already in use or the names already been taken just add a one or a letter or something onto the end of it so maybe you've done this before for some reason so I just want to put that out there once you've done that now you want to type in copy and then you want to do a space and now you want to do the little star that is above the 8 key on your keyboard so do that little star then you want to do the period sign so right next to the alt key on your keyboard so right above the alt key you want to do a period or a dot and then you want to do another star so again star period star and then once you've done that you want to type in backup after you do one more space so you want to have space in between the last star and backup exactly that appears on my screen then you want to hit enter it should say that a certain number of files have been copied once you've done that we're going to be continuing on in this tutorial so you want to type in at this point CD and then space reg back so REG B A C K so CD space REG back then you want to hit enter once you've done that you want to type in DIR and then hit enter so once you guys have done that successfully, you want to type in copy, like we did before. So copy, space, now you want to do a star, period, star, and then you want to do another space. Once you've done that, now you want to add two dots at the end. So after the star, you want to do a space and then two dots. Then you want to hit enter. That's going to say overwrite. We're going to type the letter A. To confirm, we're going to hit enter. It should say a certain number of amount of files have been copied. Once you've done that, you can just type in exit into the command prompt here. Restart the computer and hopefully you should be good to go. So I do hope this brief tutorial was able to help you guys out. And as always, thank you for watching and I do look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.